All right. Well, welcome to a quick, fast uh, rundown on what we're going to do with forecasting each week. Now, uh, what you need to do is uh, open up salesforce.com, go into your reports, and uh, you can go over to the left side here under uh, the columns and go into the letter D and go to DSM reports. And you need to open up your uh, pipeline by stage. Okay? And um, mine has a little different look, obviously, because I am uh, going to be looking at all of UDSMs, but yours in particular will have uh, the same look and feel. And if it doesn't, let me know, and we will update it to your benefit. Now, I know some of you uh, have different views in Salesforce.com and uh, that's quite fine if you want to use the pipeline dashboard or if you want to um, do a pre-built report like the one that you're looking at here. Um, what I really mostly want to discuss is, uh, and I'm gonna, I always pick on Bill, so I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna pick on Bill because I'm in a hurry to get this done. Now the first thing that you're gonna see is it goes from this shaded blue grayish area is the beginning and then it goes all the way down to the next person's uh, name just like it would be for Ben obviously has only one record in here so it shows uh, your name and the number of records the number of records corresponds to the number of opportunities that you've created now I just want to reiterate that opportunities are only put into salesforce.com if you have determined using your sales process, the triangle, that you have discovered the hurt, that you have either discovered or provoked the hurt, that you've done a, maybe qualifying of the hurt, and uh, maybe you've gotten to amplify the hurt. Any of those areas uh, obviously must, must take place before anything gets on a list to follow up. Because we're talking about quality here, okay? So um, in this example, Bill has 13 records. Like I said, our rule of thumb for success, uh, and this is based on now 10 years of records in history, that you're going to need three times quota in the pipeline. Okay, so we know that it takes roughly 10 sales to set 10 separate uh, accounts. Um, it could be one account with 10 products, but that would be pretty rare. So 10, 10 records would be uh, uh, a quota month. So you need to have three times that in Salesforce to roughly gauge your success. Now your closing ratio can completely change those numbers, but that's a guideline. Um, so not picking on Bill because obviously he hits quota month in and month out. And uh, we are obviously re-cleaning up Salesforce right now. It's a new quarter. It's the second half of the year, et cetera. So uh, we're not looking to do any gotchas here. So that's the first thing I'm looking for uh, when I open up uh, pipelines in general. The next is, is that we roll over here to the right, and we can see that the grand total uh, that, that those 13 records represent is uh, 8,000. 652. Again, that, that's a number that uh, we would like to see uh, as a gauge possibly at three times uh, at the number as well. So you have two ways to uh, gauge yourself, but you're going to have to figure out your own uh, ratios to be most effective. Okay, so then the next thing I look at at a glance is, is where do these deals fall in the stages. Basically, is there a good flow of deals going from stage one, two, three, four, all, all the way to stage nine? I look at that. So we'll look at this and say, see that, uh, sorry, that we have uh, all the way down to stage eight. And uh, in stage six, we got uh, five deals working. We got uh, three up here in stage five. So that's the next thing I look at uh, right away. 
is just to see if you've got a good mix going and, uh, and, and what that mix looks like in your pipeline. The next thing that I personally am looking for uh, when it comes to forecasting is that I look for the deals that are stage five or better. Okay, and what's important about that, as you know, is stage five is at the top of the triangle, it's buy in. You know, the customer has made their first initial decision, they're probably going with you. They could still fall back emotional and need some more uh, work there, or they could flip over on the rational side really quick. Uh, decision psychology would suggest that that's typically the case, right? They make their first initial decision based on your proposed solution, and they are ready for immediate facts and figures. They have questions to be answered, etc., cetera, and, um, and, and the sale goes much quicker. So what does slow down the sale? Initially getting them on the phone and getting into that discovery process could take two or three calls or ten different attempts. Attempts don't belong here uh, in a pipeline format. Attempts belong in your Salesforce task to follow up and, and attempt again to get them on the phone. So let's be real clear about that. This is quality. This is real. So the deals that I see on this that Bill have before us is uh, there are three records in buy-in, four in solution details, one is at Taylor the solution, and two at commitment. So right there is a hefty forecast that we could uh, start to look into these deals more closely. And that's what the team needs to do, right? When we go into stage five, and we know either is this deal moving rapidly on the rational side, you know, does the does the customer want uh, step six uh, solution details right away, and uh, or or and or did you just move through that and you made it all the way to uh, tailoring the solution, but you need some more information? You know, each one of these areas typically is going to give you um, an opportunity for a follow up meeting. We know that. Um, but once you are on board and you're following the, the decision process, the influencing process using the triangle, nothing should stick around for all that long. And that brings us to, and I'm going to roll back up and show you the last activity date. Last activity is really important. There's close date and there's last activity date. Now, what I would like to say going back to these stage five and these in particularly these three deals is last activity 110 that's today I happen to be uh, looking at this uh, 17 now 1116 now that's one that I would, I would open up right away I would click right into uh, the opportunity actually and you can click on any of these and work your your day-to-day -day operations right out of this uh, particular report which is that's probably my high C way of doing things but everybody has their own way um, and I would dig into basically what's going on uh, with this particular account um, now it's slated to close uh, January 11th well that's tomorrow so wouldn't that be interesting on our team meeting Monday uh, which is long after the 11th uh, it's the 14th and we find out well 55 days went by you said it was going to close did it and if it didn't why didn't it now clearly um, we're looking at a rep man deal so we we expect it to happen but um, if it wasn't going to happen and it was a different kind of a product we would want to dig into that opportunity and look at the notes we want to know what kind of roadblocks came up what's preventing this sale from happening is there another meeting set on the calendar? Because there should. Now that's the next thing I wanted to talk about real quick. Is this close date? I really don't want to see a bunch of same dates. Now we got a little bit of a mix going on here, so that's pretty good. Now here's one on Repman that was expected to close on the uh, the second of the month. It's 58 days old as of looking at it today and it hasn't been touched since the second of the month so you know knowing Bill he he, uh, he probably knows what's going on with J&M 
obviously this is a Hawaiian uh, dealer, et cetera, a VIP dealer. I mean, we know things, I know things, but the company really doesn't know anything. So they're going to want to know because we have this new rule that the company wants to enforce, which says 60 days, you better find a way to get it off here or close it because we're not going to be... Uh, really interested in pipelines that uh, are beyond 60 days old. So right here, a flex DAP that's uh, 127 days old, um, hasn't been contacted for uh, now 11 days or so. You know, what's going on? Um, there's $960 against it in forecast. Let me be clear. The company is looking at stage five, six, seven, eight, and nine for forecasting. They're looking at forecasting and they're looking at the dollars that that uh, represents in those categories. Now what we need to do and what you need to do is be really good about these close dates. So in any given week when I need to start forecasting right out of Salesforce which starts on Monday the 14th I need to be able to go in and look at anything that's dated the 14th and beyond. For example, stage five, three records, what's uh, expected to close? Uh, we've got one deal and two deals, three, four deals, five deals, and six deals. So each of those six deals, I will add up those dollars and I will forecast them at face value at this point. Now, I also uh, will forecast, because we're required to do both, face value will show up. In fact, all of these dollars are going to show up, but I'm also going to apply an accuracy factor. It's a percentage of your accuracy over time. I know Bill's accuracy to the penny usually, um, and I also know uh, everybody, uh, everybody has a bullshit factor as well. Pardon my French. But it's important that we have accuracy, we have open, transparent uh, understanding of these deals. And these deals aren't deals until they close, they're just opportunities, but we want to be working a large, uh, at least three times the uh, pipeline level in order to get some quality sales for the month. In particular, and, and mostly in conclusion, um, I just want to review again some of the highlights of pipelines and what matters. Uh, the account name, great. I can go look at account and see account level notes. But when there's an opportunity, I'm not interested in account level notes. I'm interested in opportunity level notes, which means I will click on the opportunity. Okay. The, uh, the last activity must be within seven days, period. No deal at all should have uh, more than a seven day period where it hasn't been touched. Um, unless there's something I can find when I click on that opportunity that gives me a cause for uh, pause, meaning that I'm going to look to see if there's a certain condition, some kind of situation that's preventing the sale from uh, closing. Usually it has to do with proper appointment setting and uh, the larger the deal, the, that means the bigger decision. There's more mini triangles, if you will, per uh, decision makers and uh, getting those people together uh, at, a, at the big table meeting, uh, apparently, you know, that takes a little more work. That's really all there is, is, the, is, the, is there weather conditions, uh, is, is the dealer attending NADA, uh, was there a medical situation, uh, something came up, the uh, zone manager came in from General Motors, for example. There's, there's things, I get it. We need to know that on the opportunity uh, as it's in there. Okay. So the close date, again, and the reason I'm going to the close date is that to me, the close date means there's an appointment. Okay, it's not an if, come, maybe. It's not a hopium. I hope the dealer's going to call me. I hope I get a hold of him. Uh, I hope that uh, today he decides to go for it because it's end of the month. I expect it to be a meeting, 
I mean, you should set up meetings that are firm, confirmed, and uh, they're real, and they show up in Salesforce's meetings. Because that's the other indicator of what's going on. Now, you can have a huge pipeline, just like you can have a huge list on a yellow piece of paper, on a pad of paper. Both of them uh, are the same list, but the system is the one that drives uh, proper behavior, gives uh, transparency and information into your activity. So uh, no yellow pads uh, are ac acceptable. Now again, just one last thing on aging. If the deal is um, over 60 days, we have to cause for concern that you have missed the mark on discovering the hurt, provoking the hurt, and probably more importantly, qualifying and amplifying the hurt. Um, now, if you happen to have a deal that changes from one proposed solution to another, I really strongly encourage you to just kill the record and start a fresh new opportunity because it's really not doing you any favors by uh, having those numbers racking up like that. Um, it's just, it, it doesn't show proper management of your business. Um, it shows a little bit of laziness and it implies other things that uh, we just don't want to have to imply. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense to you. Review this uh, again, see if it uh, makes sense. But as you can see, when I do a total team forecast, I go all the way down to the bottom, I get our total. I can see uh, all the stages represented on a graph and the dollars. So um, I'm not the only one that sees this anymore. The executives see this. Okay, and we're going away from an Excel spreadsheet, A, to save you the grief, saves me the grief, save you the time and the energy uh, from having to duplicate efforts and do other reporting. Get your opportunities into Salesforce and don't allow a BS factor. And this isn't a gotcha exercise for management. This is a forecasting uh, exercise and, and it needs to be accurate. And I really, really appreciate if you can take the time to figure out how to use Salesforce properly so that when we pull these reports, they're accurate. All right? So thanks for your time. Lots of success. Good luck ahead. We have another uh, five and a half months to go to really knock it out of the park. So let's start seeing uh, some improvement on this, and we'll talk about it in our team meeting on Monday. Thank you.